Hi, Panda here. It's nearly the end of 2022 and we've had another amazing year of lots of great and interesting video games. So as usual with these lists, I do something a little bit different. I'm going to say the top 10 games that I finished in 2022. So we've got a mixture of new games and retro games and then I'll throw in some honorable mentions at the end. So here we go. Lake is a beautiful, small indie game. You follow this woman who's returned to her sort of like hometown and a place that she lived about a decade ago. So she's lost track and lost in touch with some of her people she knows, some friends, some associates. So she returns, she takes over her dad's job as the delivery person. So she goes around, delivers posts, but you get chatting to a few people that you might have remembered from the past. You help a few people out and this unravels the story but there are like multiple choices in the dialogue so the ending you get will vary depending on what choices you made but overall i just found it a nice relaxing game deliver some posts it was nice to chat to these interesting and diverse cast of characters in this small town like american lakeside town sort of vibe going on and it had some nice tunes on the radio overall it's a nice vibe it'll last you about six to eight hours i think it's definitely worth checking out What Remains of Edith Finch is an interesting indie game. So you play as Edith, she returns to her family home and explores around the home. But as she explores around the home, it unravels sort of like these memories and she gets visions of her other family members from this large family tree. So as she explores the house and discovers new rooms and different family members, she learns a bit more about what happened to them and what caused them to die. And you sort of get sort of a theme and vibe well, each story is very unique and different and so the effects they use varies but I don't want to give any spoilers because that's kind of like the main thing. Sure it's a short game and about two hours but I still think it's definitely worth playing and this has got a nice good strong story. The Gunk is another interesting indie game, sort of like a third person adventure game and you basically have a special device that sucks up gunk. You kind of land on this alien planet. Um, there's just a few characters, but I feel like they have like strong personalities and you really get to like them. And as you explore the planet, you see this gunk about and it just like suck the gunk up. But once you suck all the gunk up in an area, all the wildlife and the colors come back. And it's just really nice to see an area explored that was really dark and gloomy come to life. And as you go along, there's some few puzzles here and there, and then you'll just unravel some more mysteries, sort of learn things for the environment. There's something more mysterious going on this island, island, on this planet, than just the gunk. So as you unravel this world, you'll find out more, and it kind of really does grip you as you're like, I need to find out more, what happened here, what's going on, and I think it's a really good game. Tinykin is what would happen if you got Honey, I Shrunk the Kids combined with Pikmin. So you explore this interesting world. It's like our world, but you're very small. Your character's from a different planet. They've come to find out the origins of humans. And as they explore, they find these little creatures, the tiny kin, and they can help them carry things, cross ob pick up objects, cross dangerous objects. And what I love about this game, there's not really any combat. And I know that might be a shocker to some people, but I think that's great. You get to explore this huge house, various different rooms, meet some interesting characters and solve some different puzzles. And I just feel like it's got like a really good flow. It never got too tricky and there's plenty of bonus things you can do. And this was just a great small indie adventure and I'd highly recommend it because I really enjoyed exploring those areas and I definitely want to go back and explore some more and see if I can find any more hidden secrets. Omno is a beautiful indie game. I'd say it's journey-esque in its vibe. So you don't get any dialogue, you're kind of learning what happened and what the story is through the environment. And you can either like glide on your staff or you can use your staff to like hover across large gaps. But what is different from journey here I feel like is that sometimes you go to what I call like a small open world section and you just solve some puzzles there and then you can move on to the next area. But I feel like each area is definitely unique, distinctive, it's got a unique art style, it just looks really beautiful, sounds beautiful, and I just found myself really gripped, just like I was with Journey the other year, where you're just like, I need to keep pushing forward, I need to keep seeing what's next. It was interesting, 
it felt calm but exciting at the same time and this is one of those beautiful indie games that are definitely worth checking out. I Am Dead just snuck into our top 10 list this year as I've literally just finished it a few days before I started making this video. I Am Dead is a beautiful, uniquely styled indie game. So you play as a character who's recently passed away to discover that he can talk with his dog and you learn more about the island. I don't want to give any spoilers here, but basically you go to different areas of the island and you, as someone who's died, have the special power to look through objects, but also what they call slicing. So you can look through an object at certain different degrees and angles. And this way you solve different puzzles. So there's a basic gameplay of trying to find an item. So it's like a find object game, but there's another one where it shows you this image but it might be like the bottom of a kettle. So you have to find a kettle, but then slice through the kettle to get the right level with that pattern to find the collectible and unlockable. And there's a lot to do here. Sure, you can get through the game in like four to five hours if you're rushing through the main story. But if you want to go around hunting down for all these different objects, you could be there for a long time. And I felt like the story was really beautiful. You get some flashbacks of and some memories from different characters saying a bit about the island and about the certain character you're trying to learn about. I just found this presentation for these really beautiful and some amazing stories in there. I feel like this is a great way to get lots of mini stories about a certain character and an overall larger story about the island. Splatoon 3 brings back the fun and excitement of Splatoon 2, but with even more content. We've got a brand new story. I really enjoyed going through that. Lots of different interesting puzzles. They make you use different weapons for different stages. A really good way to test out. It is a good way to start, actually, before you play in the rest of the game, because it really kind of forces you to like use different types of weapons and put you out your comfort zone. Like, oh, I'll maybe try the sniping one or use the crab tank. But overall, I felt like there's some good story in here and a bit of a mystery kind of just wish there was some more single player but overall I was happy with what there but what makes it such a good package is having the normal lobby the normal battles like uh, splat zones turf war or the rainmaker um summer run is back and I feel like summer runs even better this time I feel like there's just more stages and some special events on and they keep updating it adding new stuff recently they just added the big run where Salmon Run invades one of the other normal maps you would find in Turf War. And also there's a new card battling game. That's really good. Once you get into your head, get into it and get your head around the mechanics. That's great fun. And overall, I just like the vibe. I like the new band, Deep Cut. And overall, this is just an exciting Splatoon game with plenty of options. You want to do single player? Tick. You want to do multiplayer versus? Tick. You want to do PvE multiplayer? Tick. It's there. It's all there. Everything. Oh, you want a card game? That's there. This really covers all the bases, and it's great to see Nintendo make a sequel to a game still on the same system. Nintendo does have a habit of making a game and going, right, we're not going to make a new sequel till there's a new console out, and it sometimes it feels like it's been too long, but I think this is a good amount of time since Splatoon 2. Pokemon Puzzle League is a classic Nintendo 64 puzzle game. It's basically paneled upon, and I love paneled upon. So it was really great to see a panel upon game but with a Pokemon aesthetic, but they've really leaned heavy into the original Indigo League anime series with Ash, Ketchup and Pikachu. It's great to hear all the music. I like the, how the music sounds. I don't know if it's depending on the audio chip from the N64, but it just really has good renditions of a bunch of great songs that have been shown in the anime series and this game is jam packed with modes I've not even finished all the different modes in this game I finished the main stadium mode but there's so many hidden different types of puzzle options in here it's really good and overall this is just a great paneled upon game if you're playing it single player or multiplayer locally or if you're playing on the switch online version you can even do online as well so yeah this is a great puzzle game and i really enjoyed it. it was nice to have such a classic game still hold up today and that's how it's made it onto our top 10 list this year what can i say about sayonara wild huts this game looks amazing it's so beautiful there's something about the art style the vibe it gives and I do love a rhythm game and especially a rhythm game that does something a little bit different 
So each one of these stages is slightly different. You could be driving a motorbike or you're riding on some type of playing card and you're just traveling through the environment. You're collecting these like diamond shaped gems and sometimes might even be like a boss battle. And what I like about this rhythm game, you're just moving like left and right to like different lanes and going with the flow. But it's not quite like a rhythm game in the sense of like rock band or guitar where you're not trying to hit specific notes. You're just trying to move into the right lanes and collect these diamonds and you can just get a high score and it doesn't really feel like except for like maybe if you get hit in the boss fight not really a game you can lose and the music the soundtrack for this game is amazing and definitely worth checking out and I could easily replay any of these levels over and over again this is just one of those games once I saw it I was like I knew I had to play it and then once I played it I was like wow this game is breathtaking Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, some of you who've been following my content for a while will be very surprised to see a Pokemon game on my top 10, especially one so highly rated by me. But Pokemon Legends Arceus is a breath of fresh air. I used to like the Pokemon games and I'm really into the anime and I love the Pokemon spin-offs. Give me Pokemon Mystery Dungeon any day of the week. But mainline games, I've kind of fallen out of. I don't know if it's just a bit too samey or they weren't really changed enough. But here I felt like the Pokemon company made a really big effort here. They got these beautiful open worlds you can run around and it was nice to be able to just throw the Pokemon balls and catch Pokemon without having to do this repetitive battle every time for each Pokemon. Sure there are some Pokemon battles here but there's a right amount of them where it doesn't become tiresome. I like the quests, I like this historical like feudal Japan type vibe going on. Overall there's just loads of great content here and great mystery. Sure there are some technical issues. No one's gonna lie this game is not a good looking game. It's full of some technical issues, some bugs, not to the severity of Violet and Scarlet, but that is just something you should keep in mind. But I think, considering that I highly rate this, even though it's got all those issues, just tells you that this game is very good at its core. And the fact that this is a Pokemon game I've actually finished and not fallen off is amazing and I've even done some of the post game content so that's how highly rated and I really hope I've got my fingers crossed that the Pokemon company will make a sequel or a mainline game with many of the elements from Legends. They've gone back on a few things in Scarlet and Violet which is kind of disappointing they put some things in that I would find annoying so let's hope they go back to Legends because Legends is a great game and I'd highly recommend checking out if you're a Pokemon fan but you feel like you've fallen off the mainstream games these this one is one to definitely go for and give a try. So there you go, that was our top 10 games we finished in 2022. I'll put the links in the description below of the full list of games that we finished. It's been an amazing year and we're looking forward to see what will be our top 10 in 2023. Have a good year.